Good evening and welcome to Night Prayer this Monday the 17th of August. As I'm recording this it's uh, just throwing it down with rain and uh, I heard some uh, thunder earlier on. Uh, so I do hope that you're keeping well. Thank you for joining me for this service. If you would like to have a cross in front of you or have a candle lit please do feel free uh, to do that. For those of you who'd like to follow the Bible readings, the Bible readings tonight will be uh, from the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. And the New Testament reading is a gospel reading, Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 2, beginning at verse 23 and going into chapter 3. So Proverbs 1 and Mark, the end of Mark chapter 2. So uh, let's just be still for a moment and remember that God is with each one of us wherever we are. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And as we come into your presence now, Lord, speak to us. Still our hearts and help us to receive from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And now we have a time of reflection to think back over the day that has passed and, and perhaps to consider things that we need to surrender to God and ask for his forgiveness, knowing full well that our God is a merciful God and he is more ready to forgive than we are to repent. So let's just spend a few moments and think about those things we want to just submit to him and say sorry. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. And the poem for Night Prayer. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no simple thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. And so we have our Bible readings, and I'm going to read from the English Standard Version again, the ESV. So the first reading is Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The beginning of knowledge. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise, wise dealing, in righteousness, justice and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, 
the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 23. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. One Sabbath, he was going through the cornfields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck ears of corn. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the, the high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. And going into chapter 3. A man with withered hand. Again he entered the synagogue and a man was there uh, with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked round at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man stretch out your hand he stretched it out and his hand was restored the pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the herodians against him how to destroy him this is the word of the lord thanks be to god For those who uh, were with me last Friday night for night prayer, you may see that we are following through on uh, Mark's Gospel. And last Friday we had uh, the scripture about the paralysed man being lowered through the roof of a house by his friends in order to get him near to Jesus. There being such a crowd, it was the only way to get the man to Jesus. And Jesus saw the faith of the friends and told the man his sins were forgiven. That horrified the religious leaders, the teachers of the law. Who does he think he is? Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus, knowing what they were thinking, showed them that he did indeed have authority on earth to forgive sins. And that was part, and this, this is all part of a build-up of tension eventually which leads to the arrest the trial and the crucifixion of christ here tonight we have another example of that clash jesus's disciples were taking ears of corn to eat as they passed through a cornfield on a sabbath the old testament gives guidelines to farmers to leave the edge of the field unharvested so that travellers could pick some of the crops and it would not be stealing and it would not be harvesting which was forbidden on the sabbath and as i'm saying this i'm just recalling that there's been a call because we've lost so much of meadow field in our country over the last 20 30 years 40 years maybe we have it's a dramatic loss in meadow field and therefore all the pollinators and the insects and, and animals that would feed on that and there is a call for farmers now to leave parts of their field to meadow and not and not use it for crops 
Anyway, so the, the disciples here have uh, picked the crops um, to eat, the pit, pit, which they're entitled to do, but the Pharisees rebuking Jesus because they say it's not lawful to harvest on the Sabbath. That of itself is true, but that's not what they were doing. The Pharisees, you see, are so focused on the words of the rule that they missed the intent of the rule. So it's about the word of the law rather than the spirit of the law. Jesus answers them by using the example uh, of something that King David did in the Old Testament, that there was a, he was driven by a need, there was a hunger, and the eating of the bread of the presence in the temple, which itself should only be done by priests. But he, he, there was a great need, and therefore, you know, Jesus is saying, the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. You've got to understand the spirit of the rule and not just take the words at face value. And so the Son of Man, referring to himself as Jesus says this, so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now, this isn't going to go down well with the Pharisees, doesn't go down well with the Pharisees. For one thing, Jesus is quoting scripture at them, which they're supposed to be the experts of. Now, at this time, there were, and at our time now, I should say, there are rules about social distancing and keeping ourselves safe. And I, I see that there are those that are taking no notice of that guidance. There's a reason why we've got these rules in place at the moment. You can see the logic and you can see the reasons behind it. Understanding a rule or a direction is important. It helps us to know what we should do. And if we refer back to the reading from Romans, so to Proverbs, sorry, that we had at the beginning, let the wise hear and increasing learning. The Proverbs of Solomon about gaining wisdom, gaining understanding. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. You know which way to go, you know how to behave. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction, and that is very true, isn't it? Sometimes we are given instruction and we choose to ignore it for our own reason, and that turns out to be very foolish. So let's take on board listening and learning from the Lord. And so back in Mark's Gospel, the beginning of chapter three. The Pharisees have had this little dispute with Jesus about the Sabbath. Now they're waiting to see if he heals anybody on the Sabbath. And Jesus questions them. He looks at them and says, well, on a Sabbath, is it right to do good or to do harm? to give life or to kill. Now they cannot or they dare not answer him because they know what the answer is to all of that. Of course, it, you need to do good, not harm. You need to give life, not kill. Irrespective of whether it's the Sabbath or whatever day it is, those rules still apply in scripture, in the law, and they know this. And Jesus turns and he is angry at their hardness of heart. Now, anger of itself is not wrong. It's what makes us angry and what we do with that anger that's important. Jesus expressed his anger by doing something very positive. He healed the withered man, the man's withered hand. 
he did good. So that anger turned into something very constructive. And it's an important lesson for us to learn, not to let our anger lead us into something that is destructive, but to do something good with it. For Jesus, this incident and others lead the Pharisees to become more and more determined to destroy him. But ultimately, it means that the will and the purpose of God in Jesus is fulfilled. So please take from both these readings, the Proverbs reading and the Mark reading, the lessons that Jesus wants us to have tonight. Do not be hung up on the letter of the law, but look rather for what is the spirit of the law. What is the right thing to do? And we should learn and gather instruction and knowledge that we may be good witnesses for Jesus Christ. Amen. The Song of Simeon. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have pre prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us turn to our prayers. And I'm going to begin with the collect for yesterday, the 10th Sunday after Trinity. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to us such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, the only worker of great miracles, Send down upon our bishops and pastors and all congregations the spirit of your saving grace, and that they may truly please you, pour out the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, in the name of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. And Heavenly Father, as we pray for our bishops, our pastors, and all those who minister in your name, we hold before you our bishops Julian, Philip and Jill. Our vicar David, Alison and Josh, praying a blessing upon them as they take this week to rest and recover. We pray for Barbara and Yvonne. We pray a blessing on their ministry. We pray for Emma as she prepares to join us as our curate. Lord, may she and the boys soon feel so much a part of the family of St. Thomas's that they feel at home. And Lord, bless Emma's ministry and may it develop and grow with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. We hold in prayer before you tonight all those we know who are part of the family of St Thomas's. 
We pray for all those in our community. Every man, woman and child who live in the parish of St Thomas and in all of Blackpool. Lord, may we see such an outpouring of your spirit that people turn to Jesus Christ, that they may come to believe in him as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as over this last weekend there have been commemorations for the anniversary of VJ Day, let's pray for peace in our world. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, stir up, we pray, in the hearts of all the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth. We pray that in peace your kingdom may go forward until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful. Lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain. And in a few moments of quiet, name, before God, those people who are on your heart who need his healing touch. From our Fellowship of St. Thomas's, we pray for Sheila, Leah, Louise, Debbie, Stephen, Nick and Joanne, Bob and Sue, Norman and Jean. And Lord, as it has come through our prayer tree today, we pray for Sarah's mum. Lord, we ask you to give her healing, Lord, from this heart attack. Lord, we ask you to give Sarah all that she needs. May she know your presence with her in her worry and concern. Lord, may she know that her church family are praying with her and for her. Lord, guide the medical experts, the doctors, the nurses and bring Sarah's mum peace and healing. God of all healing, bring your comfort, strength and peace, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of all, give to those who minister to the suffering wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. And we pray, most merciful Father, we pray for all those who are grieving this night, for all those who have lost a loved one. 
Lord, surround them with your love. Send to them those people who will comfort and care for them in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit all our homes this night, O oh Lord, we pray and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we come towards the end of our service, please do remember if you've lit a candle to extinguish it before you go to sleep. And thank you for joining me. In peace. We will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And let us bless one another in the words from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord, the Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. May you have a, a blessed and peaceful night. Good night.